Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Off the Glass podcast. Today we have episode number 27 for y'all, and we are going to be giving our NFL award race predictions. Um, if you listen to last week's episode, we did say that the next one was probably going to be pretty much a full NFL episode. Um, and that's still the case, but we're definitely going to have to touch on a little bit of the FIBA World Cup because it has been going down over there. France got bounced out after, I think, the first two games, and they were one of the favorites to at least make a deep run in the tournament. And I know you've got a guy, big Lakers man over there, who's getting crazy love in the Philippines. They're saying that he is the most popular player on Team USA. And he honestly and he should be. Not even just popularity. He's been playing like one of the best players on Team USA. So got a lot to unpack there before we get into our NFL award predictions. But we're going to get the housekeeping out of the way first. Um, if you are on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. If you're listening on audio platforms, <clears throat> sure to leave a five-star uh, rating and pre-download the show. It helps us out a ton. Uh, and before we get into all of that, we're going to kick it off like we always do. How are we doing today, Dame? I'm doing good, man. I'm, it, it warms my heart to finally see my guy get some respect in the NBA world because people be talking crazy on his name. People be acting like, bro, it's just a fluke. He's a foul merchant. You know what I'm saying? His game not going to translate. He's playing alongside LeBron, AD. Bro, he's hooping with some of the best young players in the league. And he's looking like one of the best players on the team, bro. Like, is this about time my man's Austin Reed to get his respect? That's all I got to say. And we can go ahead and dive right in there. Um, they played earlier today. This was, I think, the third group game for the U.S. team. Um, they're now 3-0. and They beat Greece 109-81. to uh, Obviously, Greece doesn't have um, Giannis playing. He sat out this tournament. But um, they did have a guy on their team. Let's double-check his name. Papa Giannis. He kind of was working out of the post. Mm -hmm. um, but USA pulled away in the second half in large part due to Austin Reeves leading the team in points as a whole, but also coming off the bench, giving 15 points. He still had two steals, five rebounds, six assists. He's handling the ball. I'm seeing him do these little half spins. He's looking a little shifty. He hit somebody with a tween behind the back cross Euro, and he's celebrating up the court with the whole team hitting Euros the whole way back. Um, he is really getting into his back in this tournament and we're only three games in but legitimately they showed the replay of them doing the player introductions before their first game and you'd have thought Austin Reeves was LeBron like the way that the <laughs> crowd like was erupting <laughs> for him itself I'm sure like the Lakers fans like a lot of that stuff from, like Kobe going international and like everybody becomes Lakers fans and he's the only Laker player on the roster but Look, he's backing up the popularity with the play. Um, and I think he also had a play where he he ripped somebody up on one side, behind the back, hezzy to get past two people on the fast break, threw it to Tyrese, who threw it back to him, and he went up and then dropped it off to Bobby Portis. Like, he's – look. He's nice, bro. I'm telling you, bro. Listen, Austin Reeves – let me try not to get too ahead of myself here. Now, also side though, Austin Reeves really might be the perfect role playing guard. Like, yeah, there's gonna be times where he could pop off and get you 25 points. If you need him to switch off and be the ball handler and bring the ball up the court, run the offense, facilitate. He's a good passer. He can do that. If you got, listen, you need space and he can shoot the three. If you need shot created, he can get to the little mid range. He can get to the free throw line. He can score the basketball. And on top of all that. Because, you know, the white boy is not normally known for playing defense. He'd be sitting in that chair. Like, I'm telling you, Austin Reeves, like, obviously not to, like, an elite level, but he really doesn't have weaknesses. Like, he had, he doesn't do anything bad on the court. Like, the, he doesn't do everything elite, obviously, but he doesn't do many things bad on the court, man. Austin Reeves, a plug-and-play guy, bro, can play with anybody. I just, I'm just happy he get his respect, bro. Because people was talking like, like, this was a fluke. Like, this was a Linsanity type run. Yeah. Like, it ain't nothing that, none of that over here, bro. Austin Reeves is legit. He's here to stay, bro. They were, and they've been doing it all summer, thinking that the hype that he's been getting is only because he's on the Lakers. And Why is he even on the FIBA team? Why? What is Austin? Bro, I seen pictures of the FIBA team. It was like, some uh, spot the, the problem here. Someone doesn't belong. I'm like, okay, bet. Wait till they start playing. And now y'all see. Now y'all see what's going on over here. 
Yeah, and he, like I said, their players and the starters in this game, some of them struggled. Brandon Ingram only shot four shots. Um, Anthony Edwards, I think, started off the game one for six. He ended up finishing up, I think, you know, like three for five. So he finished the game four for 11. But um, like I said, a, a large reason why they pulled away in the second half was because Austin Reeves came in and led that second unit. Um, but yeah, all summer people have been saying that it's Austin Reeves hype is only because he's on the Lakers. And I think slowly but surely, granted, right, it's just the opening stages of FIBA. But look, he's backing it up. He is backing it up. Bro, y'all should have knew he was legit when he went to the pl- his first playoff game. LeBron yeah. said, you take the game over down the stretch and score six straight buckets and said, I'm him. That should have told you all you needed to know, bro. He's not scared at the moment. I know we was talking about this before the podcast, but there was a point around the end of the postseason last year where people were asking if you would rather have Austin Reeves or Tyler Hero. And I sat and I thought about it, and I was like, ah, it feels a little crazy to take to, to Tyler Hero, right? Like, he hasn't played, you know, he had been hurt. Um, but it's like he already won six man of the year. We know he's, like, at bottom, like, absolute worst, 20 PPG. But I don't, I don't know, care. bro. Now, like, the care. more I sat and thought about it and watching it, I'm like, look. I think given the same opportunity, Austin Reeves probably could give you 20 PPG. And I'm Listen. seeing it on the defensive end. Tyler Hero does not have the playmaking in terms of the ball handling and especially in the pick and roll like Austin Reeves was able to do, even last season with the Lakers and how he's doing it with Team USA this uh, you know this World Cup. So uh, I've really had to reevaluate, and I might legitimately take Austin Reeves. Bro, there's – Tyler Hero only does one thing better than Austin Reeves, and that's score the basketball. Austin Reeves. That is, is a big part than, of the game, though. It is, no, no, <laughs> absolutely. That's what I'm saying. So for the Heat, I think I'd probably have Tyler Hero just because they need people that can just score the basketball yeah. and nothing else. But as far as just all around, Austin Reeves, can, he's a better playmaker. He's a better ball handler. He's better. I was about to say something crazy. Actually, I don't think he's a better shot creator than Tyler Hero. But he's a, um, he's a better defender. Like, mm-hmm. he does more things well in the fact that, like, I mean, the scoring difference is – it's a good difference, but it's not like Austin Reeves is giving you eight points over here. Austin Reeves can give you 15 to 20 points as well. So, But Hero Austin was Reeves. also doing that when he was legitimately, like, for long stretches, like the third option mm-hmm. on that Heat team. Austin Reeves, like, he kind of just grew into this role, and even then he's not consistently the third option on yeah. any given night. So, you know, who knows with the same kind of opportunity, but – I'm yeah. taking my guy, man. I'm riding with my guy. I, I'm i sorry. I'm riding with my guy. Call it bias or not, nah, I don't care. AR has been hooping over there. Also got a shout out. Um, Jaron Jackson has been going crazy. Even in the game today, he had he probably had like two or three blocks they took away from him that were clean, and the refs are crazy. But he is, I mean. Make sure he's not stat padding, bro. That's all they're doing. They just right. make, sure they, <laughs> make sure he's not stat padding. I imagine it's got to be very scary because I'm pretty sure in FIBA there is no three second violation, so he literally can just <laughs> he can just stand there like you mm-hmm. you can't not be at the rim. Um, but the other guy I want to make sure I give love to on Team USA is Paolo, who in the first game of the World Cup I think he had he led the team in scoring. He had 21 off the bench. He also had four blocks, and two of them were crazy chase down blocks, and he is punching it, sending it off the glass. Um, and he came into that game and was running the five, like as a small ball five, which made me start to think, and I saw other people talking about it on Twitter, that if the Magic wanted to run a similar lineup, that could look like you would have Markel or Cole Anthony at the one. You could put Jalen Suggs or Anthony Black or Jet Howard at the two. You could put Franz in at the three. If John Isaac ever plays basketball again, right. he could come in and play the four. If not, you would slide one of them guards to the three and put Franz at the four. And then you got Paolo at the five, and that is crazy spacing for Paolo to get downhill. Everybody on that, everybody on the court can shoot. Everybody on the court can and be like be a good connector for one another. You've got good defenders. I just said Paolo had four blocks playing that exact role, kind of just helping out and rotating over at the rim. Um, and the worst thing is obviously you're giving up a, a decent bit of size. So like, this is going to be something you would run forever, but I think that'd be a really interesting look for the magic, you know, this upcoming season. 
Yeah, I like it as a little change of pace, a little lineup real quick. Like if you come in, in um, obviously you can't run it all game, but definitely something like similar to how like uh, like I hate to bring everything back to Lakers, like how when the Lakers put like LeBron to five, obviously mm-hmm. to a little bit lesser extent, but it just opens up the floor a little bit more. Obviously all that spacing on the court allows, um, well, it would be Paolo in this sense, lanes to the basket. Like I like it definitely in spurts. Um, like mm-hmm. you said, can't play it all the time, but I definitely like that lineup. It, it, it the changeup is going to be nice, and it's going to catch some teams off guard. Yeah, you definitely going to have mismatches somewhere on the. Yeah, it's court. like how do you how do you guard that? Someone somebody's going to have a mismatch. You're going to have a big on Paulo or Franz, and both of them are taking that big That's off food. the dribble. So, yeah. I like that. I like that. So, so shout out to them. Team USA has been been handling business. A team that did not handle business like <laughs> literally at all in an embarrassing fashion is France, who were one of the favorites to at least make a deep run in this tournament. I think they finished third in the last two World Cups and then came in second and got silver in the last Olympics. So in terms of international basketball, they've been right there competing in every single major event. And they lost by 30 in their first game to Shea and Dylan Brooks. And I think RJ had like 30 in that game uh, to Team Canada. Um and knowing that you need to win the next game, they go out and I think they blew like a 12 or 13 point lead in the fourth quarter and lost to Latvia, who I don't even know. I don't even know I, who that is. I think like I know Porzingis is from Latvia, but I don't think he's playing because um, he's not. He's, he's hurt. He, yeah, he's got the plantar fasciitis. So like I'm looking at their roster right now. Karooks is up here. Davis Bertans is up here. Um, and that is literally every single player I recognize. Just the <laughs> two of them, bro. So a team with Gobert and Batum and Evan Fournier. I think Frank Nidalekinas that might still be on the, the French team. Like, but this is a team that like internationally has performed well for a long time embarrassed and is out of the tournament after two games they still have two more games to play but they are not able to advance to the next round so i know you're a big gobert fan over there any thoughts on his his first round exit in the the world cup but gobert bring the losses bro that's all i'm gonna say but he just brings the losses bro like he just maybe if he stops shooting threes every time i see it listen i didn't watch the game i didn't watch none of it i'm sorry i don't care about friends but Every time I see a clip, it's hey, this guy <laughs> shooting threes. What are you working on right now? What are you doing, bro? Get in the paint, please. I'm I didn't watch the game, so I can't say that's a reason why they lost. But obviously, if you have a team with Evan Fournier, Rudy Gobert, and Batum, regardless of how they play in the NBA, if you go to a like international team, that is a solid team. And then obviously in Rudy Gobert. So it's like to lose both those games is crazy. I can understand how they lost the first one because the first one you said they had Shea, uh, mm-hmm. Dylan Brooks, RJ Bear. Like those are obviously good NBA players as well. But the second one to who? Who they lose to? Latvia. Yeah, that's a problem. Nah. <laughs> that that can't happen. I'm sorry. I don't even. No disrespect to to Latvia. I don't know if anyone's watching in Latvia, but they can't lose that game. I'm sorry. Dav- Davis Bertans had 50. I'm I'm about to bitch for somebody. 15. 15. Whoa. whoa. <laughs> Fifteen, he coming like that. Okay, and never mind. I see why they lost. Fifteen. I'm about to butcher the rest of these dudes' names, so I do apologize. Uh, Roland Smith had twenty. Um, this is Arturs Zagers had twenty two, and I ain't even about to attempt this last one, but he had thirteen. Uh, Gobert finished the game with nine points. And seven rebounds, two two blocks, three steals. Evan Fournier had 27. I mean, like, dudes was trying. Batum had 13. Uh, they got Nando DeColos up here. That's a throwback. He's played for the Knicks way back when. Um, but, yeah. They stink. <laughs> Bow, <laughs> bowed out uh, in the first round. Um, next year they'll probably, or next, and the basically the next big tournament that they have, I'm sure they'll have Wimby. Um, and Joel Embiid also has applied for French, French citizenship. So he could That's potentially a huge be a, lineup. 
Jesus just Christ. Wemby at the one. <laughs> <laughs> and beat at the two. <laughs> at this point, might as right. well. That's, that's uh, a huge lineup. Might as well tell uh tell Tony Parker come back, facilitate everything. If you get Wemby and Embiid, like y'all kind of just gotta tell Gobert to kick rocks, right? Of course. Absolutely. <laughs> what do we need not- you for? <laughs> at that point, what do we even need you for? I mean, you can sit on the bench. You can come off the benches like spell Joel a little bit, but we don't need you, bro. I'm sorry. You're good. Uh yeah, so tough, tough for, for France getting lit up by Bert, there's another Bertons on the team. I don't know if that's his brother or not, or if that's just a common last name, but yeah. Losing Bertons a Latvia. Brothers. <laughs> Cooking how about it? The Bertons brothers. That's crazy. Before we get into the NFL award predictions, the last thing I'll say on the, the FIBA World Cup. I know some of y'all have seen it. If y'all haven't, I am imploring y'all that are listening or watching right now. Go on Twitter or go on YouTube and go look at Rondé Hollis Jefferson's FIBA World Cup. It doesn't matter what game you pick. If somebody got to cut up on all the games, great. If not, just pick one. He's. I know he's doing it on purpose. He's wearing 24. He got oh. himself the little arm yeah. in. Uh-huh. I... People genuinely were like tweeting. Well, the World Cup a- account tweeted Kobe's watching this and smiling. And I'm like, what the heck is like? I didn't know what I was looking at at first. And I was like, it looked like Kobe, like the way he's playing, the way he's, the way he's dribbling, mid range, fade away, pull up three. I'm like, bro, what am I? Everything just looked real Kobe esque. Mm-hmm. And then they did a close up and they showed who it was. And like, I see the Hollis Jefferson on the jersey. And I was like, nah, bro, it's no way. Had to start the whole <laughs> video over. Um, so, yeah, if y'all have not seen it, please, please go watch that highlight clip. Because it is really, like, kind of uncanny how much he looks like Kobe playing right now um, in the World Cup. Bro, as a Kobe fan, it's so beautiful to see. It was so beautiful to see. Yeah, like I said, like you said, the first thing that caught my attention was the, I saw the 24. I saw the right. armband. I'm like. Like, huh? Like, I'm thinking it's a throwback. Like, it's an old highlight. But Kobe facts. didn't wear 24 for the Olympic team. So I'm like, nah. I'm right. Tripping. I'm like, what is going on here? And, and the, the shot, the same, shooting the same type of shots, mm-hmm. the same little turnaround middies, like he's getting to the cup. Like, it, it was nice. If he was right-handed, I'd have lost it. Like, I'd have absolutely lost it. Somebody so. somebody posted it and mirrored it so it looked like he was right-handed. And they were like, look how crazy, look how much crazier it looks now. And it was like, yeah. Yeah, love to see it though. Definitely love to see it. Shout out to Kobe, man. Yeah, so he and I, he's playing for. But I don't even know what team he was on. I just know he was hooping. He had like thirty nine. I think this is Jordan, right? I believe so. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. J O R. Yeah, yeah, I um, think it is. Yeah, it is Jordan. Um, so yeah, he he's giving people buckets right now, and he's playing in the Philippines this next season. Mm. But his contract does have an NBA, NBA opt-out clause, and his season ends in February. So after February, if somebody wanted to pick up Rondé Hollis Jefferson, who been looking a little Kobe esque, you know, it's, y'all be on the lookout for that. This dude gonna come to the NBA and score two points again. Hey, it's gonna be a pretty two. It's gonna be it's a gonna pretty be a two. Nice two. It's gonna be a Kobe esque two. <laughs> uh, well. Cool. Glad we got, I had to touch on that because I, I, like I said, I watched the video so many times before I found out who it was. And then after I found out, I had to watch it like twice because I still could not believe Rondé Hollis Jefferson was giving people buckets like this in international basketball. Everybody is acting different when it comes to international basketball. That's always one of my favorite parts of it because you see a role player out here getting a highlight tape like Kobe. Dude, not even in the NBA anymore. Mm-hmm. That's why the all season is. That's why the all season is so cool, bro. It is like even to a lesser extent when people go to like when these, uh, especially the older NBA players, they go to like the Drew League, mm-hmm. and, like playing this league, like the Jamal Crawford's league. Like every time I look up, him Isaiah Thomas is scoring fifty in that league, and they look like the greatest player all right. of all time. So that stuff is so cool to see because you can really see like, bro, that that goes back to that guy on Twitter. It's like a Muslim world champions or what? Like, bro, these are the best players in the world, bro. Like even our bums are are better than yeah, right? <laughs> That's what I said, bro. If 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 you took right now the reigning, no, actually, let's completely inverse it. 
You take the worst NBA team right now, put them up against the very best any other team internationally. It's not going to be a contest. Smoked. Smoked. And it's no disrespect to them. It just is like it's the premier league of the sport in the world. You say you, thing about the NFL. There's no other football equivalent anywhere you, else. Can you imagine the NFL? I feel like, I mean, the NBA is bad because, like, you getting torched, but, like, the NFL, bro. No, the NFL is on a different level. It, it would be. Can it would imagine? be Bishop Sycamore looking. Like, bro, can you imagine when I'm trying to guard Tyreek Hill on the, <laughs> on the outside? <laughs> bro, get out of here, bro. I can't. And, if, and it's like, because we don't even have, like, a Olympics in the NFL. Either. So, we, you don't never see the best of the best on an NFL level. Can you imagine that? If we had, like, a. Nah. <laughs> you line up. You got Pat Mahomes. Jetta's on this side, <laughs> Tay on this side, Reek in the slot with freaking oh Derrick Henry God. in the backfield. You do play an ultimate team. In the Travis, <laughs> literally play right, ultimate literally. team. Travis Kelsey at tight end, and I got the best, the best O line in the league. You're not, you're, bro, they're getting 20 yards every single play, minimum. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that would be way, way too unfair. And I think for the person that said that, like, he's a decorated track and field athlete. Um, I think he recently like did st- he one of his recent times was like on par with stuff that Usain Bolt had done. So he's like he's him, and I get what he was saying. Like they're technically not world champions because it's just a national league, but it's just like the sentiment of it. I feel like when you put it in the context of that's what they say in the NBA and the NFL. If this was the MLS, you know nobody that wins the MLS say they're world champions because you could take the best MLS team. And you could go take a G League team, like a backup team from England or Spain or France, and it smoked. Smoke. Mm-hmm. Smoke. Maybe not enter Miami now that they got messy, but any other mm-hmm. any other MLS team. And it's not not even a fair fight, bro. So I think it's it's well within its lanes. Right. Um side last sidebar before we do get into this NFL war thing. If y'all have not seen the Bishop Sycamore documentary that came out, I watched that this morning. That was insane. The dude was taking out PPP loans in the players' names to fund the school. Bro, bro I have to watch it because I've just seen little clips and like, bro, it's this guy, so that much guy's worse insane. than I thought it was. It's so much crazier than I thought it was gonna be. You know what's the name played against that team, Booker? Yes, yeah, he was in the, the documentary like mad That's times. Crazy. Um. But yeah, do had them fill out paperwork, and the, the players were like, "Why we got to put down our birth date and our social security number?" <laughs> that should have told you everything you need to know. <laughs> the documentary crew, you know, like in documentary, sometimes you just pull the text up over. Yeah, <laughs> we found at least twelve players with PPP loans taken out in their names, and it cuts to them asking one of them. He's like, "Do you know? Did you take out a PPP loan?" He said, "Nah, I ain't never took out no loan. I don't know what you're talking about." And it's like. Nah, he just ruined his life. Twenty thousand dollar PPP loan, ruin his life, ruin his credit, <laughs> ruin his life. Bro, what? I seen because I, I did see a clip where they was like, "You ruined a bunch of kids' lives" or something, something, something. He was just like, "I don't care." Like he he said something like, I don't "Nah." Care. The way he was, he really was like, <clears throat> "I gave them an extra year." He was like, "They weren't gonna go to college anyway. Like if they was gonna go to college, why were they here?" And like I get what he's saying, but like. No, it's not like they just no, had an extra bro. year. Some of these dudes, like I just said, are in debt, actual <laughs> debt. One of the dudes, the quarterback got like an offer later to like Grambling State, and then it got t- like taken away because they found out he went to Bishop Sycamore and his classes weren't real, so he didn't have enough credits to graduate high school. So he was like, we can't le- – like literally cannot get you past the NCAA to get you in, even though we just offered you a scholarship, so we got to take it back. Bro, how, like, the fact that he was able to pull this off is, I kind of respect it, because it's like, <laughs> the, no, the, I'm just saying, like, the fact that he was able to finesse all these people, all these schools, get, bro, how do you, how on earth do you schedule a game against IMG? <laughs> bro, how does that happen? I'm, I'm not trying to spoil, like, the whole thing, but he literally said, they, I, I didn't even know this was a thing, they have people that do high school scheduling, like, major teams across the country. And so he came on, like, this is his job. Like, he scheduled all the games for, like, IMG, Modern Day, 
Duncanville, like any of the major people that try to play national schedules. He was like, Roy Johnson just hit him up and told him, we want to play the hardest schedule literally possible. And he said there was no other team in Ohio that wanted to play IMG. So he gave it to Bishop Sycamore. And then crazy. It just happened to be like the game of the week for ESPN. They played it <laughs> you know me, uh, on, on ESPN and then everything just went left from there. He said like seven of the other teams canceled their games after the broadcast. Like, And he said he's coming back next year. Yeah, like, he needs to be in jail. <laughs> the crazy part is they did a whole like 80-page report and the like all, after all of that, the like thesis of it was just like, yeah, this was bad. None of it was illegal, but like, <laughs> nah, bro, you're a bad person. We can't put you in jail for it, though. So That's just like, crazy. All right, I'm gonna do he it just again. cool it, make it like, literally is saying he's about to do it again next year. Like this, like he's probably doing it right now <laughs> under a new name. And it's like, nah. At this point, bro, if you sign up for this, you're like being a willing participant. Like it's yeah. a whole document, bro. It was on every news station at the time. That's crazy, bro. Yeah. That so just, just y'all doesn't make sense. Y'all definitely should tap into that documentary. That was that was a crazy hour and a half. I could not believe how deep it went. But quick transition from Bishop Sycamore to <laughs> actual good quality <laughs> NFL football. Um, we're going to be giving our NFL award predictions for this upcoming year. So that's going to cover all of the major end of season awards, which is coach of the year, comeback player of the year, defensive and offensive rookie of the year, defensive and offensive player of the year. And then lastly, we're going to be giving our MVP predictions. So let's go ahead and start off with coach of the year. Um, I'll go first this time. And I think the guy that I picked is probably the betting odds favorite. But it just – it makes the most sense. I think that they're going to win their division primarily because their division is weaker than it was last year in some respects. Um, and their team finished their season on a high. They've continued to get better year after year. So my pick for Coach of the Year is Dan Campbell. Um, I think he's going to have the narrative. You know, everybody – he already has got the extra, you know, popularity coming out of hard knocks um, from the prior season. Um, and obviously, like I said, they had a chance to make the playoffs last year. Things didn't go their way, but they ended up spoiling Aaron Rodgers' chances to get a playoff send off for his time in Green Bay. Um, but I, I think they're genuinely going to win the AFC, the AFC NFC North. Um, I mean, like the Packers is going to be the first Jordan Love year. So I'm not too high on expectations for team success. I think what the Vikings had last year was kind of fluky lightning in a bottle. I don't think they're going to perform to that same level. And the Bears, I think, are still a few seasons away. Like, as much as I'm high on Justin Fields, like, I think they still need a couple more pieces on both sides of the ball before they're, you know, real contenders, not even in the NFC, but, like, really to make some noise in the division. Um, so, like, not even necessarily just by process of, of elimination, but I think the Lions are the best team in this division. Um, and will probably win and be going to the playoffs and very easily could see them having a 10 or 11 win season. Um, and I think that will probably be enough to get him um, coach of the year with the additional narrative that like he inherited one of the worst teams in the NFL and in just a few seasons has them winning the NFC North. Yeah. I like that pick just because, like you said, I, I think the narrative is completely on their side. And, like, mm -hmm. just the Lions in general, like you said, coming off a of hard knocks. And just last season in general, like, I was one of those people that was like, oh, I'm rooting for the Lions just because, I don't know, it was just a fun team that, like, yeah. you have no – they suck for so many years. Like, you have no reason – unless you're in that division, obviously. You have no reason to hate the Lions. So, it was kind of everyone's, you know, like, uh, like favorite team, like, low-key favorite team. So, then coming into this year, like you said – they're now in a better position. They're in a really good position to win the division. Yeah, they they got he has the whole narrative on his side. So I could definitely mm -hmm. see that. Um, my pick for coach of the year is actually Doug Peterson. Um, I think that I, I think that Jacksonville is going to win a lot of games. Like I think they're going to be I, I, I wouldn't predict them to be the number one seed, but I just think their schedule their division, like, they're going to win a lot of games. I could see them winning, like, 12 games. Like, I see mm -hmm. them winning that many games. 
because all right, you have a solid defense. I'm not gonna say the defense is great, but the defense is solid. Mm-hmm. You have second year with the with uh with Trevor Lawrence in this system. <clears throat> Excuse me, in this system with all these weapons around him, and then adding adding Calvin Ridley, which I think is gonna be really really huge because that gives yep. him a solidified number one receiving option. I like Christian Kirk, but I don't think he's a solidified number one. So when you give um a guy as talented as as Calvin Ridley to Trevor Lawrence, I just think that that's only going to make the offense even better. Mm-hmm. Um, ET, you have Etienne in the backfield. I really like Tank Bigsby as well. Like, I think he's a, like that one two combination between him and Etienne. That's a really good backfield right there. And then you still have Jamichael Hasty, who's a solid like third down back. So, just in general, between the upgrades they made this offseason, excuse me, you have year three for Trevor Lawrence, which I'll talk more about him a little bit later in a couple of these awards, but I think he's going to have an insane type of year. Mm-hmm. And I think the division is weak. Like they can easily run away with this division. If like, they don't go five and one in the division, I think they've like failed. You know what I mean? Like right. they, they, and the only loss I would really be like understanding of is like, okay, you split with the Titans. Cause Mike Vrabel defenses are always going to come to play. And, like, always. Titans-Jags is always a hard-fought game. But, like, there is no excuse for y'all to lose home or away to the Texans or the Colts. That's what I'm saying. Like, they, it's just so easy that I think they're going to win enough games. I think they are going to challenge for that one seed. I'm not going to say they're going to win it. But I think they can challenge for that one seed. And just off of those games alone, I think that, that Doug, Peter, Doug Peterson has a good chance because – just looking at their schedule, they have like just hard games on their schedule. Kansas City, Buffalo. I'm a Steelers fan. I'm a little biased, but I'm not even going to include them. San Fran, maybe one of these Tennessee games, like you said, in Cincinnati, in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. That's it. I think they can win a couple of those games. But even if they don't, like the rest of these games are like they should be favorites to win those games. So I think they're they're I think Jacksonville's in for a really big season. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think. I'm really, really high on Calvin Ridley and Trevor Lawrence as like a QB wide receiver duo that's going to break out this Me year. Too. Um, mm-hmm. So, and I think, like you said, it fits very perfectly because it moves Christian Kirk back into a number two role, which is where he kind of excelled to begin with when he was in Arizona. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that makes a ton of sense. That makes a ton of sense. Um, next up, we have Comeback Player of the Year Award. Uh, the odds on favorite right now for comeback player of the year is DeMar Hamlin for very obvious reasons. Um, I think like he, I'm thinking solely based on somebody that I've either had like a really catastrophic injury or just, you know, missed a lot of time with injuries or really played horribly and like really elevated their level of play. So him coming back, if he is not like, you know, having like a hundred tackle season or gets a couple of picks, like really elevates his stats. Like if he comes back and plays the same way, that's still a fantastic story. Like that doesn't make him a comeback player in terms of how I'm viewing the award. Right. Um, And I guess, look, it's a phenomenal story. Just the fact that he's back playing anyway. So like that aside, my pick for comeback player of the year, and I know I'm gonna have to defend it a little bit is Russell Wilson and Boo. <laughs> <laughs> it is I'm not gonna lie it is almost solely because I genuinely am refusing to believe that Russell Wilson can play that bad two years in a row like there's there's just no way bro there's no way that he can do <laughs> this maybe he just sucks like, you never know he could just row. stink I, I'm I'm really that is I don't have much more outside of that. Like they kind of have gotten hit with the the injury bug in camp. Obviously, Tim Patrick, Jerry Judy, I think has a hamstring injury, um, and Javante Williams is coming off of the ACL injury, but he's been looking good in preseason, which is I mean obviously a great sign. And he came back I think in like ten months from the injury, which is insane. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just think look. They, Nathaniel Hackett clearly was not ready for what he got himself into as a head coach in Denver last year. You bring in somebody like Sean Payton, who's been there, done that at a high level for a very long time. You can already, I mean, he's already come in and been like, look, there's stuff that happened here last season that are just, it's just not going to fly on my watch. 
And so, uh, look, I don't know if it was like a comfortability thing, whatever happened that Russ kind of just got complacent and then the play really tanked, fell off a cliff last year. Um, there's, there's no way. I, I just feel like there cannot be any way they are that bad. So even if they are just competitive in their division, like, I feel like he has a good case to win the award because he gen like they were four and eleven last year. He only threw for thirty five hundred yards and had a threw sixteen touchdowns and eleven picks. Like it don't get much worse than that for somebody at that level. So like even if he just has a above average season, I think he very well could win this award, and that's minimally what I'm expecting from him. If not, I will come up here and let y'all know that Russell Wilson is officially washed. I get your your argument of just the fact that he cannot play as bad as he did last year, which I think is true, bro. There was a point in time that a guy had a TikTok series and it was, can Russell Wilson throw as many touchdowns as he has bathrooms in his house? <laughs> or got to like week 16. Yeah. <laughs> he got way too far into the season before he finally passed up that number of bathrooms. So I, I do agree. I don't think he's going to play as bad as he did last year. But with that being said, he was arguably the worst quarterback in the league last year. So it's like, I don't think it's that right. hard to not play that bad. <laughs> he just got to get, like, bro, he, this is the, that was the least amount of TDs he's ever thrown in his career. Like, oh, yeah. in the, the, his next, next closest, I think, was, was 2014. He threw 20 touchdowns and seven picks and made the Pro Bowl that year. So it's like, this is like as bottom of the barrel as we've ever seen him. And I just, He's even like I said, if you just this stats from the season before through 3,100 yards, 25 touchdowns, six picks. If he puts up roughly around that range, I think he could easily win comeback player of the year. That's where I just disagree because I don't think he could do that. I think he's cooked. You he can't 3K 25 and six. That is like mundane, bro. No Tim Patrick, no KJ Hamler. Jerry Judy just got hurt as well. I just think he's like if they if the if they're a better team, I think it's be just gonna be because they're gonna run the ball. Like they're just gonna run, 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 run the ball. He's gonna be somewhat of a game manager. Even then, even if he has like a, a like a solid season, I don't think it's gonna be enough to give him to get him this award. Like mm-hmm. it's a, it'll be a good comeback player, but I don't know if it's gonna be enough to get him an award. I could be a little salty because he absolutely sold me in fantasy last year. So. <laughs> he, 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 like, he, oh uh, God. He who do you have as comeback player of the year? My comeback player of the year goes into my coach of the year. My comeback player of the year is Calvin Ridley. I think that uh, a whole year off for a suspension, um, and even before that, the year before he had the he wasn't really playing too great. And then I think he took that time off, like he was done for the rest of the season because he had like mm-hmm. issues or like mental health stuff going on. Yeah. And like we talked about it before, so I'm not gonna go too crazy into it. This, I think the Jacksonville Jaguars are gonna be a really good team. I think that Trevor Lawrence is gonna break out, and if he's gonna break out his number one option is going to like reap a lot of that. And I think that Calvin really someone who's already shown he's capable of being a number one, putting up crazy, crazy numbers. I think he's going to do that again. So I have Calvin really, I think he's going to become back player of the year. And then honestly, another one I slid in there, I put in Lamar Jackson because Lamar Jackson has been mm-hmm. hurt the past couple of years. He was hurt last year, missed the end of the season. And I think that with his change of OC with more weapons, like he's going to put up crazy, crazy numbers. And I think that he definitely is going to have a case for uh, for comeback player of the year. So May- Calvin really won, and I put Lamar Jackson like 1B kind of. I didn't even think about Calvin Ridley, but I mean, that does qualify, bro. Didn't mess the entire last season. Yeah. Just, it wasn't hurt or anything, just got suspended. Yeah. <laughs> um, Which is kind of wild. He got suspended for the whole season because of gamble. That's A whole season is wild. Right, whole season, but Deshaun got 12. We ain't even going to get into that. Right. <laughs> That's disgusting. Um, okay, let's go on to defensive rookie of the year. I have two guys here. One of them is a little bit higher up on the betting odds. Uh, the other guy is kind of a dark horse pick, but makes a lot of sense to me. So the first guy I have here, I think it's top three or five in the betting odds, is Jalen Carter. I don't even know if I need to say much. He, again, had number one overall prospect grades. And 
obviously because of the incidents that transpired after the national championship game. There were some character issues that came up. Whatever the case may be, he slid all the way to whatever it was, nine or ten. Nine. Mm-hmm. Um, and now he's on an Eagles team that is possibly hungrier than last year because they've now been there and know what it's like to lose in the Super Bowl. So that is probably fueling their fire. And additionally, like we mentioned when we did the NFC East preview, he's going to get to be in a very healthy D-line rotation. And even just from a, um, you know, a, a interior D tackle perspective, he has Jordan Davis and Fletcher Cox. And so it's like, He's never going to have to get gassed on drive. Like he's always going to be able to rotate and be fresh. And in those reps, really be able to give that 100, 110%. And if he's giving you that consistently, there are not many centers or guards in the NFL right now who can block him point blank. He is a menace. He's a monster. He was very likely going to be the number one pick for a reason. So because of that, he is my main guy for defensive rookie of the year. But you'll like my dark horse because my dark horse is Joey Porter. Oh, okay. Um, okay. And this is my, my logic. A, we talked about it. The Steelers' defense is very good. Um, you have TJ Watt still. You have Minka still. They brought in Patrick Peterson, who's going to kind of be there to help mentor him. Um, and, you know, he's going into a place where obviously his dad plays a lot of, you know, a little bit of a narrative there additionally as well. But – um, I could see, you know, the defense is playing really good. People are getting pressures. You've got Minka over the top to kind of help you. You can play a little bit more aggressive that way. You know, who knows? He comes away with a couple of interceptions here or there. You know, we saw him getting really competitive in those one-on-ones with George Pickens in some of the videos that came out from training camp. Um, they're going to continue to make the both of them better each and every day throughout practice. So they'll get better as the year goes on. Um, so yeah, a couple things go his way. The team plays well. The, the Overall, the defense is playing well. He has some good pass breakups, has a couple of interceptions like that. I think will at least toss him into the conversation for defensive rookie of the year. So Joey Porter is, is my dark horse for that award. Okay. I like that. I like I like that. I like the logic behind it too. I it, it definitely I can see that happening. You know, the pressure from TJ Watt, Minka over the top. I like that pick a lot. I do. Um, my defensive rookie of the year. I'm just be boring. I'm just, I pick Will Anderson. Um, I just think honestly, at the end of the day, what really gets you what really gets you award like this is sacks. Right. Like he's yeah. gonna get to the quarterback. He's gonna get sacks. It's that plain mm-hmm. and simple. It was really between him and Chris, and I was like Chris Carter and Jalen Carter. Mm-hmm. Um, I just told Will Anderson just because I think that like Jalen Carter is gonna have a great year. Like you say, he's gonna stay fresh. That role that D line is gonna constantly be rotating, so it's gonna be like he's gonna be fresh at all times. So he's gonna have a good rookie season. I just think that I don't know how much um how much the voters would take into account like. Is it just him or, like, is that D-line all stacked? They got to worry about this guy, this guy, this guy. Yeah. Like, it has nothing to do with Jalen Carter as a player at all. So, I just think Will Anderson being there, being that guy, playing with, playing under D'Amico Ryans, I think that he's going to have a really good season. He's going to get after it. He's going to get to the quarterback. And he's going to be the show on that defense, basically. Um, him and Derek Stingley Jr. Jr. are the pretty much the only two guys with, like, a kind of somewhat of a bigger name on that defense. Um, so I think that him like that, along with the fact that he's going to have really good stats his rookie year, I think he's going to win a defensive rookie of the year. Yeah, that makes sense. And look, you don't got to say it's boring because sometimes you don't have to overthink some of these awards because I did not overthink offensive rookie of the year because my pick is B. John Robinson. Yeah. <laughs> um, look, all I got to say is Tyler Algier had a thousand yard rushing season with the Falcons last year. This man, Bijan, is about to go crazy, bro. He's about to go insane. He's being drafted top 10 in normal fantasy drafts for a reason. The expectations on him are to have very high production immediately as a rookie, um, which, you know, he's he lived up to at his time at Texas. That's why he got picked so high. Um, so look, I'm not going to overthink it. I think all of the, the QBs have tough positions in terms of their, their circumstances. Um, like offensive lines aren't great really for any of them. Um, you know, Texans are lacking weapons. 
Um, so like there's, there's a lot that goes into it. And I just don't think any of them are going to have fantastic rookie seasons. Um, and I'm expecting that out of Bijan. So I know he's the odds on favorite, but I, like it's for a reason. I think he really is going to win the award. Listen, all you got to say is, bro, he got drafted to the Falcons who have a really good run, running, run blocking offensive line and they run the ball the most in the NFL. He's going to go stupid. Like, it's just, just mm-hmm. like you said, don't overthink it. He's going to go stupid. I also have Bijan because for the same reasons you just said. So I actually did want to ask you a question. If if you had to pick one between the top three quarterbacks, who do you think has the best chance to win offensive rookie of the year? Um, I, got, I got my guy who I think has the best chance. I would say AR. I think Anthony Richardson has the best chance because of the his dual threat ability. Um, like it definitely is gonna hurt them not having Jonathan Taylor, which I mean I guess we'll find out in a day or if that's gonna happen or not, because they gave mm-hmm. him until Tuesday for to find a trade. But um if it's trending that way, like he's not gonna have Jonathan Taylor, that's gonna hurt definitely that you know, the security blanket of having a consistent run game would help. But what that also does is put him in an uncomfortable position where he's probably going to have to use his legs a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and he has the the athletics. We saw what he did at the combine um, to, you know, at least make something out of nothing with his legs. Um, he still has, you know, Michael Pittman and a couple other good receivers there um, in Indianapolis. So I, I think that alone um, is why if I had to pick one of the three of them, I would pick Anthony Richardson. It makes sense. I like that a lot. I, I picked Bryce Young. The only reason why I picked Bryce, because like you said, I think Anthony Richardson's situation is a little bit better for him to mm-hmm. produce. But just watching Bryce Young actually through college and through the po- in through the preseason, uh, he just looks the most NFL ready to me. Like even in the preseason games where he has pressure in his face, he is calm. He knows he's going to get hit. He's still going to step up. He's still going to make the throw. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see him make good throws. I see him be accurate. I've seen him – um I've seen him literally with the rushes coming. I've seen him evade the rush, make plays on the run. Like he he looked really, really good just as far as what I'm seeing, eye test wise, him on the mm-hmm. field. So I just think he's the most pro ready. So if I had to pick one, I'd pick him. But I think both of those guys are gonna be are gonna be contending for this award just for the fact that, like you said, Anthony Richardson is probably gonna run a lot this year, especially if they don't have Jonathan Taylor. Yeah, he's it's just He's literally gonna have to backpack that offense, mm-hmm. and he has um, better weapons too. Like, yeah, like you say he has Pittman, he has Alec, Bur- Alec Pierce. Um, mm-hmm. He has a little bit better weapons. Yeah, I think he honestly, especially if they would have kept Jonathan Taylor, he would have, I think, been far and away in the best position in terms of for circumstances sure. for all of those quarterbacks. Like that O line for Carolina is bad. Like the Jets ate them alive in that preseason game. They're supposed um, to be good or like decent too. I don't know what's going on. Like they they don't look it at all, but like they're supposed to be at least a good run blocking O line. I don't know about pass protection. Granted, the Jets D line is is maybe one of the best in the NFL, but look, they were getting mopped <laughs> in that game that, that Carolina O line. Um, and then just the Texans don't they have a lack of weapons. I honestly think C.J. Stroud's go-to target this year is going to be Dalton Schultz, which is maybe a good thing, like have a nice, you know, QB to tight end connection so you can get simple passes, get into a rhythm. Um, I think all three of them can have very, very good and long careers in the NFL um, and have all shown flashes in the preseason as to why they all were selected as high as they were. Mm-hmm. Um, They're so all starting week one, too. All right. And I think, look, that's the way to go. Like none of these teams are competing for anything. Like, and I think a lot of teams just saw what happened with Trey Lance um, (laughs) and are like, look, just, just put them out there, just put them out there. So we know what we got. So you don't run into a situation where the whole locker room is now behind the last pick in the draft and you traded three first round picks for a guy. And he's now a Dallas Cowboy for a fourth round pick. That's crazy. That is insane. Shout out Will Greer, though. I was in the building for that game, and knowing that he basically was playing for his NFL life, his NFL career, had two passing touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns, I think almost 300 yards passing, and he dying up the Raiders secondary. I'm seeing him mobile on his feet like I've never seen Will Greer before. 
Um, so so shout out to him. I hope he gets picked up because he deserves it after after that performance. He's playing for a check, man. That dudes things to you. back against right. the wall. He out there looking like Pat Mahomes. And I know, I know the people on the field. I mean, obviously the whole stadium knew, which is like I felt like they were cheering louder than they typically would for a third string quarterback because of that, because they know like this is his literal opportunity to showcase whether he might be in the NFL or not this year. And he really made the most of it. And it felt like people on the team were stepping up to the occasion. Um, one of the running backs name is slipping right now out of my mind, but he wore like number 42 or 43 bro took like a five yard out route, broke like three tackles and turned it into a touchdown. Like people just were going above and beyond to make sure that he's getting, uh, getting his stats up. So respect to him. He, he definitely got it done in his opportunity. Um, speaking of the Cowboys, moving on to defensive player of the year, I'm not going to bury the lead at all. I have Micah Parsons, who is going to be up in conversation for the award every year, probably as long as he stays healthy. Like you said, all of those defensive awards are, a lot of them are predicated. You either have to have an absurd number of picks, like you need to be, borderline like on pace to set records with mm -hmm. the amount of picks you have or it's just going to go to the person that has the most um sacks that right. year mm -hmm. um and like we already said like this um cowboys unit is going to be a top defense in the nfl have the potential to be the best defense in the nfl he came second in defensive player of the year voting both seasons that he's been in the nfl which is crazy um he even i didn't even know that he finished top eight in mvp voting last year um which is wild um but look all he's got to do is get that sack number up to whatever like 16 17 they're pretty much i think they came out like they're dedicating him full time to playing edge rush so they're not going to do any of that hybrid stuff which like i said i think I wish was the case that he still could do that because obviously he is as good of an athlete. But in the NFL, if you're able to have an elite, elite pass rusher on the field, you want that at all times. So I understand the decision. And so with him moving to that full time, I could easily see him 18, 19, maybe a 20 sack season um, because he really is that good, that fast, that hard to block. So Micah is my pick for defensive player of the year. Yeah, he's uh he's the obvious pick, man. He has the talent and he also has the narrative and he's playing for the Cowboys. So like he has all that working. What you trying to say? Yeah. I'm just listen, it's like the Lakers <laughs> thing, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? They might get a little bit of a booze. Yeah, you're, right, you're not, right. Not even that, yeah, like not even as a bad thing. Like he's he plays for the Cowboys. They get the most attention on anyone in the league. And for this defense, for him, rightfully so. Yeah, he, he like he absolutely deserves it. So and and it, I feel like defensive player of the years, um, like those top, top, top guys, you're bound to get one, especially because, like you said, you're a pass rusher. Like pretty much mostly everyone in the league who's at the top has one. I'd say besides maybe Chris Jones, he doesn't have one. Um, like Nick Bosa just got his. Aaron Donald obviously got his. TJ Watt got his. Like, you know what I'm saying? When you're at the top of the top, maybe Miles Garrett, I think he's probably due for one one of these years as well. But when you're at the mm -hmm. top of the top, like it's only it's only a matter of time till you get one. Um, so my pick is Michael Parsons. I'm not gonna talk too much into it because you pretty much covered everything. What I will say though, I do not want people to forget, and this is not just because I'm a Lakers fan, TJ Watt is that guy, and TJ Watt should have broke the sack record. If he yeah. didn't miss those games, and if they counted that last sack on that, I, think, I don't know if it was Lamar playing or his backup, that was a sack. I don't, like, they just completely ruined it. But he tied the sack record. T.J. Watt is back. The Steelers' defense will be good. Mm -hmm. He will be in this conversation again. But I will pick Michael Parsons just because I feel like he, he's going to have a crazy year too. And I think I think he deserves one at this point. Like, he came in and changed the whole Dallas defense around. He deserves one. Yeah, yeah. I think – Bro, making <laughs> all pro first team and coming second in defensive player of the year as a rookie, like on in that year, like he got moved to the end, like <clears throat> in training camp, like part of that yeah. season. Like I think somebody got hurt, right? And he just like had slid there. Bro was learning on the fly and came second in <laughs> defensive player of the year voting. Like he he's gonna get one, and I think this is gonna mm -hmm. be the year. 
Did you hear um, how he's talking in uh like I watched the um uh Ryan Clark uh I'm oh the pivot the pivot the pivot yeah, yeah, yeah how he was in that podcast he sounds locked in <laughs> he sounds like he's not playing bro like he, he's coming be. different this year for sure we need to be um I'm actually gonna ask you to go first on offensive player of the year because okay. I'm in, I need to hear yours before, before I say mine. <laughs> okay. I have one main one, and I have another one who is a, not a dark horse, but it's like it's predicting a breakout. Yeah. Um, Excuse me. My main one is Jamar Chase. Okay. Um, I just think that – and this is <clears throat> if Burrow is healthy. Like, he doesn't miss, like, six games at a regular season or something crazy mm-hmm. like that. Even if he misses one or two, like, that's fine. That, that's nothing. But – I just think that if you just look at the way it's been going for him, it's like it was Jettas came in and was like the best rookie receiver ever or something. And then Jamar Chase came in the very next year and then broke that record. And it's like, bro, Jamar Chase, he put up 1,400 yards his rookie year. Last year he missed, I think, five games, still put up 1,100 yards, something crazy like that. Mm -hmm. And the difference in just like if you looked at how they were targeting Jamar Chase, like, he was getting 10, 12, 13. Like, he was getting targeted, like, versus the rookie year. It was mainly big play, big pay, big play, big play. And I think that's because, obviously, he's just getting better as a football player. So, Joe Burrow is knowing, like, all right, this is my guy. I know I have T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd, but Jamar Chase is my number one over here. So, mm-hmm. I think he's going to put up insane numbers this year, playing a full season. Um, He's going to have the targets. He has one of the best quarterbacks in the league. It's a really good team. Like, I just think – the numbers are going to be insane. Like I think he definitely has a case for offensive rookie, offensive player of the year. And then my second guy, predicting a little bit of a breakout, I got Garrett Wilson. That is my pick for offensive player. Of the year. <laughs> I hear listen, man. All right, go ahead. I'll let you go ahead then. So that's your pick. I I typed it in and I put Dark Horse next to it. And the more I'm sitting but here, is it though? About it, the more I'm sitting here and thinking about it. <laughs> Bro, I'm, I'm I'm I fully have convinced myself, bro. This man had 1,100 yards with Zach Wilson. What he about to put up with Aaron Rodgers? He about to go stupid, bro. I'm telling you, I need so I need him in one of my fantasy leagues, bro. I need him. I need him, bro. So, oh my god. Yeah, look, we know what Aaron Rodgers how he likes to play. If he don't like you, he's not throwing you the football. Mm-hmm. Under any means, he he'll throw it away. He'll throw it into double coverage before he throws it to somebody he doesn't trust. Obviously, that guy for him for the most recent stretches of his career has been Devonte Adams. The last two years that he was in Green Bay, he was All Pro, first team, thirteen hundred yards, fifteen hundred yards, eighteen touchdowns in twenty twenty, eleven in twenty twenty one, and that was when uh, you know Packers offense was a little bit down at last year. Um, but I think, I mean, we already talked about this Jets team. I think we both think they're going to clear in the AFC East. I think they're legitimately going to be contenders in the AFC. And, like, is it crazy to think, like, Garrett Wilson could have, like, 17, 1,800 yards? He's going to get absolutely- 12 touchdowns, like, and if they're winning games – I'm I'm all in. I, like I literally I, let me pull the list back up because as I was looking at the offensive player of the year odds, um, I just was like crossing people off down the list, and then I got to Garrett Wilson super far down. I was like, I mean, this may be kind of crazy, but like when I look at Jamar Chase, my only concern there is like Joe Burrow's injury. So that's like the first five, six games of the season that he's not going to be there. That's going to hurt his stats as a whole and potentially the Bengals season as a whole. Justin Jefferson, I don't think he's going to go back to back. I think the Vikings are going to regress. McCaffrey, uh, I don't know. Potentially, yeah. Same thing him and Nick Chubb. Like health is going to have to play a big factor into that. And like it's just going to be tough. They're both getting up there in age in terms of running backs, which is when you start to see injuries pile on. Uh, Justin Fields is an interesting one. I don't know. Like, I feel like it'd be, I don't, there hasn't been that many seasons as of late where QB has won offensive player of the year and a QB has won MVP. And you know, they try to, they try to give it to somebody that's not a QB because they know MVP is a quarterback award. (laughs) Right. So then you have Reek and Lamar and Joe Burrow. And I just was like looking at these and I'm like, yeah, yeah. 
But I really think Garrett Wilson can have like 1,800 yards. <laughs> and if he puts up that kind of production, bro, he's he, he got to win. And he minimum has to be in the conversation. And that would be a crazy breakout for year two. Um, but I think Garrett Wilson – would be my pick for offensive play of the year. It's a little a little spicy, but yeah, I, I really think he's about to go crazy with Aaron Rodgers. And like the throw that they had in the Giants game where he literally just caught the snap and threw the fade ball before anybody's that turning was, around. It was gross, bro. The late hands. And that's probably what my favorite thing to see a receiver do is like the late hands. Like it's not coming, it's not coming. Very last second. Like right. that is so clean, but and it's like in that showed, like you said, like he has that trust in him already. That yeah. drive, I think he threw to him like four times. Yeah, like, you got you got to trust it, bro. He threw the ball before anybody. No one was looking. Nobody. No corners. No safeties. Not even Gary Wilson looked like everybody is just running the fade route. Mm-hmm. He just threw it where he thought Gary Wilson would be, and bro, just yep, like you said, and snagged it. Yeah. I don't know. Even the way he talks about him, he's like in the hard knocks talking about yeah, he's special, right. like, he's different. Like he's going to get absolutely peppered with targets. He's a talented player to himself. Like it's not just like oh, he's the only guy there. Like he's legitimately a really good, like superstar caliber receiver. Um, so yeah, I I don't think that pick is a dark horse pick. I just think I mean it's predicting a breakout, but I think yeah. you could definitely see that breakout. Okay. Look. 1,100 yards with, with Joe Flacco, Zach Wilson, and Chris Strebler as your right. quarterbacks. And then you just – next season, it's Aaron Rodgers. And you yeah. like, and that was your rookie year. Right. Like, your yeah. Second-year receivers go stupid. Like, Yeah. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm all in. I'm all in. Um, I'm going to give my MVP pick. And it's somebody that you mentioned could win comeback player. I'm thinking bigger. I'm thinking bigger than comeback. I'm thinking Lamar Jackson is going to win the MVP award. We talked okay. about it on the preview show. Okay. What our expectations are for the Ravens that they've had the, you know, the regular season record in the past to be regarded among the, the top contenders in the AFC. They don't have the playoff success right now, which is why they kind of stay out of that conversation when that gets brought up. Even right now, it feels like a lot of it is, Focus on the people where it should be, right? Like the Chiefs, been there, done that. The Bills, giving the Chiefs a run for their money every time. The Bengals, because they've been there, done that. The Jets, because of their roster, and then now they have a quarterback who was their literal only deficiency last year, Mm -hmm. um, who was a former Super Bowl winning champion. And it feels like the Ravens do not get put into that conversation enough. This is the best receiving core that Lamar Jackson, I think, has ever had. Since he's been in the NFL, I think he's going to rack up his second MVP award and really just, again, turn the NFL into the playground all over again. Just going to give him so much more freedom to be able to throw now to someone that's not named Mark Andrews. Uh, Hopefully, J.K. Dobbins is back and healthy, and that additional threat of the pass is going to open up the run game for them, and it's just going to get so dynamic for them. Um, I already said that I think they're like they're gonna win the division. Um, so they'll be a high seed in the AFC. Like every they're che- he's checking all the boxes for what you need to be an MVP candidate. Um, and I think he's really gonna have that kind of season again. So on top of the fact that also I think there's only ever been four people to ever go back to back as MVP. So like as good of a season as Pat Mahomes is gonna come, statistically it's hard to have voters do back-to-back awards obviously i think rogers was the last one to do it a couple years ago but mm-hmm. i think it's only ever been four or five guys ever in the history of the nfl that went back to back so i'm banking partially on that not happening because i very well could see mahomes doing it but i'm gonna go with lamar and really go all in on this this raven season being what it's hyped up to be Listen, man, the Steelers fan in me hopes that's completely wrong, but the football fan and the Lamar Jackson fan in me is fully with you. I think he definitely could have an MVP caliber season for sure. Um, <clears throat> now, my pick, I got a main guy and I got a backup guy who's a little bit more of a – kind of like how we was talking about Garrett Wilson in the office of a kid, a little bit predicting the breakout. My main guy is Justin Herbert. Now, I think that – let me just – all right, I'll pull this up right here. This is Dak Prescott with Kellen Moore. Not this last season. He was hurt, missed a bunch of games, mm-hmm. had the injury, whatever, whatever. He put up 4,400 yards, 
37 touchdowns, 10 picks. Mm. Talk about two years before that. He put up 4,900 yards, 30 touchdowns, 11 picks. Dak was so different in them seasons, bro. He was. Justin Herbert has never thrown for under 4,300 yards. His rookie year, he threw for, threw for 43. The next year, he threw for... <laughs> Next year he threw for five thousand off straight check downs and Mike Williams jump balls. <laughs> five thousand and thirty eight touchdowns in his last year. Honestly, yards wise, didn't have a down year. It was really the touchdowns because all his receivers was hurt. Mm-hmm. He had forty seven hundred twenty five touchdowns, which sounds bad, but it's only because Justin Herbert, his whole career has just been so good, especially yeah. so. <clears throat> excuse me, so early in his career, you give him. Kellen Moore, who I know you have your, you know, your love hate with him, but just the fact that it's the, gonna work perfectly because my concern was that he did not run the ball enough. <laughs> Let Justin Harper go ahead yeah. and throw it 50 times a game. He's just his second best arm talent in the league to me. That's what I'm saying. So it's like you're gonna throw the ball all over the field. And it's like that finally, finally, I'm gonna stop watching Justin Herbert throw curl flats and swing passes and screens. Like, you're wasting his arm talent. Like, and it was pissing me off because they were winning games. So it's like you can't really tell them to switch it up, and the receivers are hurt. So you can't really tell them to switch it up that much. But you got Keenan Allen back. You got Mike Williams on the outside. You drafted Quentin Johnson, who's a little bit of an insurance as far as, like, Keenan Allen being a little bit older, Mike Williams Mm -hmm. being a little bit injury prone. You still got um, Joshua Palmer, who I think is a, a good receiver. But him being thrust into that wide receiver one, wide receiver two, that's not who he is. Right. You still got Austin Eckler in the backfield, great receiving back. Um, and I just think, bro, the offense is gonna be it's gonna open up completely. They already talked about this whole training camp. Like, what's the difference in the offense? It's deep shots. Like they're like Keaton Allen said, like I was used as a slot guy, like sh- like short routes, that's it. He's running deep routes, like they're using him all over the field. I think the offense is gonna completely open up and if like Let's say on average, what forty five hundred and thirty touchdowns was his baseline already, and you're oh opening God. up even more. Like he's the numbers are going to be crazy, bro. The What's numbers the are going to be. Insane. What is the most yards in a single season? I don't even know. Let me see. But he, I, I think know. he can break it. Whatever it is, like he he has a chance to break that. No way, Peyton Manning beat out Drew Brees by one yard, fifty four seventy seven. Drew Brees got fifty four seventy six. Fifty four is cr- was that the Denver year? <laughs> yes. Not nah, that the Denver year though. He was bro. They were airing it out crazy. I remember that with the with Demarius Thomas rest in peace. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Nah, they was going crazy, but not. All right, maybe he not gonna throw. He not gonna throw. I mean, well, look, that. that Justin Herbert season you talking about is 15th on this list, and it's only 400 yards behind. I mean, yeah, if they throw, if listen, if they throw the ball enough, which I think they will, if they do all these deep passes, which he's capable of doing, like you're finally gonna allow him to throw the ball deep. And not only the fact that um it was the coaches not letting him do it, he was hurt last year too. He hurt his ribs, I think in what week but two. But even or three. in that game, I like this play stands out to me so much. Because mm-hmm. that was it was against the Chiefs, right? Chiefs, they were playing. Yep. I know exactly. Bro, what when his about. ribs was hurt and he threw the seam ball so perfectly over On the linebacker head, and he uh, grabbing at his ribs, just threw a dot, bro. Listen. P- just people hate Justin Herbert fans sometimes because they think like, oh, yeah, I swear he does nothing wrong. Like it can never be his fault. I'm sorry, I'm one of those guys, bro. It really don't be his fault, bro. He, if you watch this guy play, he's so good, bro. Like he's such a good quarterback. That arm talent is insane, bro, and it's insane. And I think that this year for the Chargers, I think they're gonna win a lot of games. I think they're going to be really competitive. I think that they'll finally beat Kansas City one of these games. I think they'll get one because I feel like Kansas City sweeps everybody in their division all the time. Yeah. But I, I think they're going to win one of those games. Um, I actually don't have their record pulled up. I don't know how strong of a schedule they have. Let me try to pull it up real quick. Um, I mean, obviously, they play Kansas City twice. They got San Fran. Oh, no, that's preseason. My bad. They got Miami. Actually, first game of the season. I think they're going to win that game. They got Dallas. They got the Jets, Detroit, Baltimore. So their schedule, oh, Denver. Their schedule isn't terrible. 
it's like an mm-hmm. average strength of strength of schedule, in my opinion. But yeah. I think he's good enough. I think that the team is good enough. They're going to win a lot of games. I, bro, I just think his stats are going to be insane by the end of the season. I think it's going to be ridiculous. So he's, he was my number one. And then my 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 kind of uh, breakout guy is Trevor Lawrence. I feel like I've been on the Jags crazy this whole crazy thing. crazy if he won an MVP award. I just think that he's talented enough. Like, he's mm-hmm. good enough as far as talent-wise. You're going into your third year, second year in the system like we talked about. And the same thing. Like, they're just going to win so many games. And what have we seen – each of these past couple of years with elite young quarterbacks getting their their guy at receiver. Josh Allen gets Stephon Diggs. He turns into Danos. Right. Then, he, then we got Jalen Hurts gets A.J. Brown. He turns into – Immediately go to the Super Bowl. Like, bro, that's what I'm saying. Like, you get these young elite quarterbacks, their guy. And that's also why I feel like both of us are kind of in on fields this year too a little bit. Mm-hmm. Bro, you give them their guy – they're going to do well, bro. They're going to at least improve and take a little bit of a leap. So I think Trevor Lawrence, along with the fact that their schedule is super easy, I think that he, they can win a lot of games that he's going to be in that conversation for sure. Okay. Look, hey, look, hey, Trevor Lawrence, we saw what he did against your boy. <laughs> against yes. the Chargers in the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, he got that dog in him for that game alone because mm-hmm. a lot of people would have packed it in. Bro, four picks? Like, come on, bro. That it takes a lot of mental toughness to not lose it there, bro. It takes a lot mm-hmm. of mental toughness. Yeah. Um, so that's it. That's our, our award predictions. We're gonna come back at right before this, you know, when the playoffs start and see where, where we kind of shake out. And then when they announce I think they announced them now like the day before the Super Bowl. We'll see if anything checks sure. out. Um if you had to pick one, one of your award predictions to go and drop a hundred dollar bet on which one are you putting your money on are we talking strictly of lock or like odds too but all right let's do one of both one of both okay i think my dark horses i think michael parsons is a lock deep with. that's what i, I would th- say too i think he's a lock um odds wise i take the justin herbert mvp odds wise bro give me the garrett wilson <laughs> you gotta take <laughs> that that <laughs> one's probably garrett wilson no, bro, I'm about to look that up right now. Hold that on. That one's probably the payout's probably insane. Um, let me pull this up, and I gotta pull out a a, a calculator. Let me see this. I also win 2023. Believe in that, by the way. Jamar. <laughs> okay. Yo, he's not even. Oh, okay, he's not even on this list. I gotta go to a different website. <laughs> That's wild. That's how you know it's deep. Now the payout has got to be crazy. Why can I not find it? This is why I don't like when this computer be trying to default to Yahoo. I can't never find what I'm <laughs> looking for on Yahoo, bro. Dang. This is play your NFL odds. Okay, DraftKings Sportsbook. They got... Dang, where's he at? Oh, he low-key is not that low on DraftKings. He top was this one, two, three, four, five. He's sixth. He just bro, he got the same odds as Devontae Adams and Derrick Henry. Damn. Okay. Bijan is higher than Travis Kelsey, Saquon Barkley, Justin Herbert. For offense, like not rookie of the year. Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, yeah, I, he's gonna have crazy numbers, but I just don't think people are gonna vote him for that. They'll yeah, give him the rookie crazy. one, but they're not gonna they're not gonna vote him for the other one. But he's He's plus three thousand. So if you put a hundred in, oh shoot! If you put a hundred in on a plus three thousand dollar bet, that payout is you get three k. I might I might have to throw a little something down on that just cause. All right, three k. That's not bad. No, not, I mean, not bad. That's crazy. He's on hundred and three <laughs> racks. Um. Let me see the Justin Herbert. He's one, two, three, four. He's fifth. Okay. I still throw a little. I might throw a little something down on that. Because I, tru- I truly think he could do it. Why is Jarvis Landry on this list at all? He's not Dude, even on a team. You have to be kidding me. There's no shot. He got higher odds than Mike Evans, Keenan Allen. <laughs> Jarvis Landry? Get out of here. What are we talking about? <laughs> Am I looking at the wrong? Am I tripping? It is 23-24. As of 7 p.m. today. Crazy. 
Yeah, that's that's sick. <clears throat> oh, I cap, I capped, I cap. Garrett Wilson is oh, okay. He's like 12th. He's 12th. Okay. Okay, that makes more sense. I was like, dang, no way he's like top six. He got the same odds as Tay, Cooper Cup, Jalen Hurts, and Derrick Henry. And then right behind him is Amon Ra, Stephon Diggs, Josh Allen, Pat Mahomes, Pollard, C D, and Bijan. Mm. Okay. I, I like I like the the Gary Wilson. I like that. I might for real for real have to put some money on that because three racks is a lot. Three racks is crazy. Um to wrap up today's episode, we're gonna be doing another set of blind rankings but this time we're going to be going back to the nba the first one we're going to be doing is pgs then we're going to do centers then we're going to wrap up with blind ranking all-time nba coaches so are you ready you feel like you went three for three last time then you go three for three again let's get it man i'm locked let's do it all right so let's blind let's, ooh, gotta make sure i get it right for the <laughs> Let's blind rank these NBA point guards. The first one I have for you is Jalen Brunson. Okay. All right. All right. I will go three. Three. Okay. Next point guard I have for you is Tyus Jones. I'll go four. I could convince myself he's better than someone on, on that on that list. Okay. Next point guard I have for you, D'Angelo Russell. Five, he's gonna be five. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he go five. Okay, you got now. You leave. It's only two spots left. I'm hoping, works I, D-Lo. I'm hoping you got. Listen, I'm hoping you got two studs up there. Okay, number one, or not number one. Next guy, you gonna put him at number one? <laughs> <laughs> next guy is Damian Lillard. Unless you got Luca, I don't know if you. Oh, I got nah. a bait. <laughs> that, all right, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. Now I'll, I'll put him one. I'll put him one. Okay. Let's hope you got somebody at two. Last guy is Mike Conley. Damn. Yeah. Right. Yeah, the brunt of that three is tough. The brunt, yeah, that's what it was, man. I just ah, uh, it's tough. Damn. All right, bad, 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 bad. Okay. I thought you. I thought you were gonna have two people better than Brunson. I thought you was gonna put Halliburton just because you love Halliburton. So I was. I, I thought was about it. Put him up there. I thought about it. Let's see. Let's see if you could regain. So now let's blind rank these NBA centers. First one I have for you, guy we both big on, Al P. Alperen Shengun. Mm, uh, that's tough. It's not a lot of good centers. Three. Okay. Not a lot of good centers. Next guy I got your boy, the Stifled Tower, Rudy Gobert. <laughs> five i don't care i don't care if i'm wrong five he stinks i'm, I'm good i don't care if i'm wrong five he stinks <laughs> okay uh next guy i have for you the joker nikola Jokic. numero uno okay okay next one i have for you big per himself carl anthony <laughs> town <laughs> Big fur is crazy. <laughs> I go, I go to, I go to. Okay, wrap this up. This person is going in your four slot. I got Bam out of bio. Damn, man, I'm folding on these. Oh my god, <laughs> listen, maybe I oh, it's tough. Okay, okay, yeah. tough. <laughs> this, if I had to redo it, it would probably be Jokic, Bam, yeah, Jokic, Bam, Cat, Singoon. Yeah, go bear. Shangun, Shangun still ahead of go bear. Go bear stinks, bro. I'm I'm I don't I'm good, bro. Go bear sucks. <laughs> that stinks. is tough. Uh, uh, last one we got here. Let's blind rank these all time NBA head coaches. The first coach I have for you is Eric Spolstra. This is an all time list. These are always like you feel like you can't really go that wrong. You can't, but it's. Mm. Eric Spolstra got two rings, been mm. to two, four final. Five, no, actually, no, no, no. The Heatles lost two. He's, He's been, been to six. six. He's been to six finals. Wait, was who was coaching with Wade? It wasn't it not Spolstra. Him? No, 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 no. It wasn't Spolstra. 
Because Spolster got he that was his first head coaching thing was with the Heatles, I think. Was it? I don't he wasn't coaching in 06. I don't think so. He's oh wait. Stan Van Gundy has a ring. Oh, I'm tripping. Oh, I don't know ball. No, he was yeah. Yeah, I about to say Spolster was definitely because he was. That was one of the little question marks. Like, what is Spolster the guy over there when when the heels was formed? Dang, I did not know Stan <clears throat> Van Gundy had himself a ring. Eric Spolster got a uh, got a coach of the year, don't he? Um, let me pull his pull his basketball reference up. Spolster has never been named coach of the year. Okay, thank you, Google. That's crazy. That's kind of wild. I'm going to put him Air Spolstra. I feel like I put everybody at three. I don't want to put everybody at three. That that did you wrong in the last two. It did me so dirty in the last two. I'll put him four, four, four. Okay, four. okay. Next coach I have for you, Greg Popovich. Ah. <sighs> Uh, uh, it's really, it's really, it's one or two. Mm -hmm. Two. I'll put him two. Okay. Next person I have for you, Steve Kerr. Is he, he, he not a better coach than, mm. damn. Steve Kerr or Eric Spolster? Steve Kerr. He, he got more rings than Spo. He do, but I mean, I could co I could coach the 2017 Warriors and get a ring. Like, I don't mean nothing. Uh, I don't think he's a better coach than Spo. I really don't. But you might have somebody that sucks up there. I, all right, I'm, I'm going to add this for context. Everybody I pulled was in that top 15 best NBA coaches of all time list that they put out with the NBA 75. So I'm not about to come out here and throw no, <laughs> no bozo randomly. <laughs> Next guy, Steve Nash. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> nah, all right. I'll put him. Um, so what I got, I got Pop at two. I got Spolster at four. Now mm -hmm. I wish I put Spolster at three. But I'll put Kerr at five, I guess. I'll put him at five. Okay. <clears throat> Next guy I have Phil Jackson. Numero uno. I'll, I'll put him at one. That's why I put Pop at two. I had a feeling. I had a feeling you had uh, Phil Jackson up there. Okay. So this guy's going in your number three spot. Come on, man. I can't go for three. I can't do that. Doc Rivers. I'm done. <laughs> End the pod, bro. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done, bro. End the pod, bro. I I'm done. It's tough. It's oh tough. my God. Doc, I'm not going to lie. He's in the top. Wait, time out. He's in the top 15 coaches of all I, time. I'm, I'm gonna pull it back up to make sure I wasn't tripping. But they put out the list. Um, Doc Rivers, correct, is on the list. Doc Rivers is so overrated. It's crazy, bro. It's like, he won one ring and has blown, I don't know how many 3-1 leads and blown even more 3-2 leads. Get, like, ugh. <laughs> that just pissed me <laughs> off. And he, oh he's, my God. he's one of four that were were active at the time that the list came out. It was him, Spo, Greg, and Kerr. Mm. Damn, I didn't think. Honestly, I really just didn't think he was up there. I didn't even know he was going to be an option. To be honest, he is a. I figured you might not have because I was like, <laughs> as soon as you put Spo at four, I was like, oh no. And then you put uh, you put Kerr at five. I was like, oh no! Nah. You know, you know, it's crazy. If we did this list before the other ones, I would have put Spo at three because I was like, okay, Spo, that's he's a perfect three guy. But yeah. putting guys at three at first would just hold me the first two ones, so it just messed yeah. me up, man. Damn! All right, yeah. All right, uh, now I'm breaking even. Now I'll three for three. Now I'm over three. Sure. Uh, got, it, got to swing one way. These blind, these blind rings is tough. I tried to switch it up because I feel like when I put them in the first time, I did too. It was too obvious. I was like, I was like, good player. The orders was player. obvious. Good yeah. player, <laughs> bad player. Finish on a good player. So I was like, let me let me mix it up. Put some mm. bums at the top. Or like people that's gonna be ranked higher somewhere else. I like this. I, I gotta, this, play, this is gotta fun. play mind games. Gotta play gotta mind play. games. This game is mad fun though. I like doing the blind rings. Yeah, nah, for sure. Those are 
And look, the views go crazy. They be busting. 20, be. almost 24,000 on it the up, wide man. receiver blind ranking. So, running up. Y'all yeah. love receivers because everything we post about receivers just goes stupid. Everything Justin Jefferson related is, has 20 plus thousand views off of it on Instagram. That's crazy. So, we, <laughs> we're about to spam Justin Jefferson content. I'm about to let's start. rank these gritties in order. <laughs> I'm about to just standing. start adding him. It, it's, a, it's an NBA short in the thumbnail. Is Justin Jefferson? See what that do? Yeah, that's what we go. we're gonna make a custom thumbnail. It's gonna have Jettas in this corner. It's gonna have Curry, Bron. We're just gonna have all the people that just yeah. get views. That right. Prescott, anything Cowboys related, like yeah. everything, all that stuff just gets mad views. It's crazy. So shameless plug, if y'all aren't already, A, made it this far in the podcast, we appreciate you. But go ahead and follow the social channels at Off The Glass Pod on Instagram, at Off The Glass Podcast on TikTok. Um, as always, if you are listening on YouTube, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. If you are on audio platforms, be sure to drop a five-star review, uh, leave a review, and then pre-download the show. It helps us out a ton with the algorithm. Because we're going to blow up one of these days. We're going to yes, blow sir. up one of these days. Uh, but we appreciate y'all for listening. As always, um, this has been episode number 27 of the Off the Glass podcast. It's crazy. We're about to hit 30. We're about to be in our curry mode. OD. 30 of them things. It didn't feel like it. That's crazy. Not at all. I feel like we've been flying through these. But switch our support, you know? So... <laughs> Keep it going. You know, it's the end of the podcast. But look, Seat Geek, <laughs> code <laughs> off the glass, all one word. Get $20 off your four Seat Geek order. You know, preseason is wrapped up. NFL regular season is around the corner. Go ahead and get your tickets for, for opening week. Get them off Seat Geek. Use code off the glass for $20 off your first Seat Geek order. Um, that's going to do it for today's episode. I'm Billy. That's Dame. And we out. Peace. <laughs>